with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my king kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In a very short-term way, today's readings are about two different standards of judgment. Take a look at what Jesus says in the Gospel. He says that a glass of water given out of goodness, simply a random act of kindness, that glass of water given out of goodness, seems like a, a low threshold for this personal relationship with Jesus. Christians have always had a very strong trust in Christ's humanity. We're told throughout the ages that he was like us in all things except sin, that he did not sin. And although this week shows him and returning in regal splendor, the judgments of Jesus are not like ours either. Think of how many times in the scriptures judgment is going to be made. Notice he seeks good among the ordinary and the bad alike. He's not just interested in you if you're goody two-shoes all the time. He's interested in you maybe even more powerfully when you're messing up and screwing up. Now I know that none of you do that so this is theoretical, but do you remember Jesus said, I came to call sinners, not the righteous. And so Jesus is always seeking good among the ordinary and the bad alike. And too often, we seek bad among the ordinary and the good alike. Just take a look at the last four or five, six months. It's been a tough time, hasn't it? But it kind of shows you who we are. We're always trying to find what's wrong with somebody. For Jesus, the sinner who does this single act of kindness can be saved. And for the rest of us, often the saint does something wrong and is tarnished forever. Someone who's living a perfectly good life slips up once, and we're not going to let them forget it, ever. I love the fact that, as we've heard many times before, I know, that we keep the body of Jesus on the cross, because 
Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Here is our image of God, arms wide open. When people go like this to you, what do you do? You hug them back, right? How about you? (laughs) And in your life, weren't some of the best hugs after you messed up? I remember my life, the one time I messed up. (laughs) (laughs) And I remember my father once, my grandmother another time, my mother, others, extending their arms like this. I got scolded too, but I also got that embrace. And aren't they some of the best hugs you've ever gotten in your life? After you messed up and people tell you that they love you anyway. That's what it's like with Jesus. Notice his hands were outstretched in forgiveness to those who had nailed him down. How often do ours stretch out to point in criticism at the wrongdoer? And then there's the judge. He speaks about he's coming as the judge. And we have a pretty dominant image of what a judge is supposed to be like and how a judge should act. It's not surprising that the image of Jesus as a fair but stern judge is deeply set with many Christians. There are even some who delight in the idea of bad people getting their just desserts. You'll pay in the end. I've heard that any number of times, people talking also. But just as Jesus told the soldiers arresting him that his kingdom was not of this world, his standard of judgment is not of this world either. It is radically different. And that should be good news, although some people do not see it that way. Jesus says, vengeance is mine. And traditionally, Christ has been represented as coming in majesty and power. Think of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel or the mosaics in many a church apse. The image is prominent in Western art. It's familiar because it's like what we do in every way, except that we don't forgive. Sometimes we just can't do it. The classic picture includes tormented souls being dragged off to eternal flames. It's likely that almost all of us have an idea of some people who should be there. How about you? It's one of the things that I hear in confession a lot, and people know it when they do it. It's almost like we're going to condemn somebody for what they have done when Christ isn't condemning any of us. St. Thomas Aquinas was the first one to say that God is everywhere. How old were you when you learned that? Younger than these guys. I learned that God was everywhere. And when Thomas Aquinas said that hundreds of years ago, people said, what do you mean everywhere? Is God in hell? And he said, of course God's in hell. And they said to Aquinas, what's he doing there? They said, he's loving the damned. And they said, well, what are they doing? And he said, hating it. It's painful to be loved when you don't want to be. And that's the notion of hell. God doesn't send anybody there. But it's that inability to simply experience that loving presence of Christ which can heal and make us whole. Remember, some of you are old enough to remember Godspell. Remember Stephen Schwartz recreated the judgment scene at the end of time. Only this time, Jesus has second thoughts, and he brings the damned along too. And they had a song asking for mercy and they received it. 
And it's an image very much in keeping with the words of Christ as King. Remember, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. What we hear in today's scriptures is that Jesus brings a different kind of rule, a rule where boundless mercy trumps self-righteous judgment. It might not always strike a chord with us because we know what should happen to people who do things that we don't think are right. But if you listen carefully, even in those moments, you might hear the Lord whispering, it was for them I came and it was for them I died. And that them includes us as well. I pray that as you stand in need of mercy, you might experience that merciful love of God. And if you can come to know it in your life, maybe, just maybe, you can offer it a little more fully to others who need to hear it.